How to add a parallax effect on a Squarespace background video. This works with the method to upload directly on Squarespace and not from an external source like YouTube or Vimeo. Let's see the effect, so you can see the video in the background moves. And this is for a smaller section, let's go and see a larger one. Here is the larger one. You can see the parallax effect. And I'll show you the code in a moment. You might be aware that there is a parallax effect for background images on Squarespace 7.1, but there is no effect for background videos. I found a CSS code on a Squarespace forum that did it in a hacky way, but when trying to use it on multiple videos, it didn't work properly. Let's start with the core parts. This is a technique with the latest document object model, the DOM, API called scroll timeline and the animate method. Now on browser support. It is possible to achieve this animation only using CSS, but it is not possible at the time of recording to use it also on Safari and Mozilla browsers. The good news is that there is a poll fill, like a plugin, to make it work also on these browsers. The plugin mentions that it should also work to make the animation work on the browsers for CSS only, but in my tests it did not work. So for this demo I will be using JavaScript version. We will need a mutation observer to observe when the video element is added to the DOM and after applying the animation to it. Then I'll show you some debugging tips so you can inspect through developer tools and play the, with the values of translate, range start and range end. And in the video description you will find the link to the GitHub source code. So let's go to the code. We are using data section ID to target the sections and in 7.1 they have a unique ID. Let me show you. Right click and inspect. And if you go to that section and scroll a little up, you will see data section ID. And we're using this to target the elements. And then we style the video element to be larger than the container. Now let's go to the JavaScript code. This is the polyfill that's been using to make it work on Safari and Mozilla. And here are some useful links, I'll post it after I record the video to the GitHub repository. So let's start with the JavaScript code. We have DOM content loaded event. Here we define the section IDs. They are the same that are being used in the CSS. And let's skip this part for now and go to the mutation observer. We loop over the section IDs. If we find a section, we create a mutation observer and we watch when the video tag is being added to the HTML. And that's it. And this is the configuration of the Mutation Observer. Then we call a function that does the animation. Let's go to Handle Video Appearance. Here we receive the video element and the observer. And here is the scroll timeline that I mentioned previously. We create a new scroll timeline with these configuration. So you won't need to modify these here. And this is where the animation is being performed. We get from the video element the section that contains it and this is the translate. We are using translate to animate it and this is the starting position and this is the ending position. Then we define in another object the duration, the fill, the timeline that we defined above and the range start and range end. So the thing here is I believe I'm still exploring this technology. I believe that these unit values, percentages, 10 and 100 might be relative to the scroll height. So if the page is smaller, we will use different values and the opposite when the page is taller. And this is basically it. This is the configuration that you will need to play with. So you will, if you want to modify some things, you can play with the translate this value and these two values. Now let's go to the second element. Here we are using relative units, viewport height, and a new thing here it is, this is for native support. For native support I've seen that you can specify range name and I will go afterwards to this example to show you where you can see these ranges in action. And the offset is like the previous values from here from range start and range end. And this is for the polyfill. And for some weird reasons if I tried this value and without this one it did not work but if I define the range start with this object, it worked. And for the polyfill, we are having this value and it is similar to 
the above one and I'm checking here if scroll timeline is instance of animation timeline and if it is this means that it is natively supported so we were using this object to define a range start and basically this is it now let me show you the range names the range name values this is an example created by the google people and here we have the options cover contain entry crossing exit exit crossing and exit and with zero range start and with 100 percent range end and when you click here and drag you see at the bottom how it moves and it shows you when it was in cover zero then it progresses and then it reaches cover 100 so you can play with different values and see how the effect is behaving after you choose something you press enter and it will work so let me show you contain and you see it being updated now let me show you the source code that i used in my example it is this github repository and i have different tricks for squarespace published here and it is in this folder animations background video parallax page header called injection and now let me show you the polyfill this is the polyfill and here it says it can work with css animations but in my test it didn't work so i used the javascript version and in case you're watching this video in the future and the support for it is also covered on mozilla and safari let me show you the css way this is where they specify the CSS way, but also cover the JavaScript way. And you can see Mozilla and Safari are not yet supported. And here is a preview from caniuse.com. Chrome and Edge supported, Safari and Firefox not. Opera supported, and so on. Let's see some examples with CSS. Here they define in the container. And here is the CSS, you define the animation. And you specify animation timeline and let's see the result and now for debugging things let me show you some debugging techniques so when you open the developer tools you go to section border and here you will find the video and when you are over the element you can see its position and when you scroll down you will see a different position it moves and this way you will see how your settings are being used and you can play with different values and see where the video appears and to get started quickly you can use this version i think i'll post it also in the github repository so you can copy paste it fast and work with it and here we have the core of the functionality we have the container the id and then we target the video element so let's try some different values now the range start is 50 percent let's try 60 percent it moved it to the, more to the top let's try 60 percent it moved it more let's try 40 and it moved it as well and you can scroll and see how it behaves so you will need to play with the values of range start and range end and you might also want to check this value the end of the animation and basically this is it if you find this useful give it a thumbs up share subscribe and leave a comment thank you for watching have a great day